Okay, uh, we're just about ready to get started. So hello everyone, thank you guys so much for coming even though it is Thanksgiving break. Uh, this is our first bonus session. So today we're gonna be talking all about React which is a really cool JavaScript tool to help make uh, building web pages really easy. Um, so my name is Eugene, uh, I'm a hack officer and I'm gonna be teaching the first half of this workshop. And then I'm Jody. I'm the hack uh, vice president right now. I'll be teaching the second half of this workshop. Cool. So without further ado, let's get some logistics out of the way. Uh, if you want to link to these slides specifically so that you can take a look at them on your device, uh, the top link is for you. And if you want to look at the README, which accompanies this workshop, uh, take a look at the, bottoms, uh, the bottom link. Okay, so I see Alex has put them in the chat, so I will keep going. If you still want to get some points uh, for this workshop, this is the attendance code for that, for the ACM membership portal. And the link on the bottom is for the feedback form for this workshop. Um, it really means a lot to us when you give us feedback. It helps us make these workshops better for you guys. Um, so it, it'll, it'll, yeah, we'll really appreciate if you could fill that out. Cool, so this is the roadmap for today. Um, we're going to first take a look at the background of React, so why you would use something like React, and then we'll go more formally into the definition of what exactly is React. Um, that's a typo. Whoops. Okay, anyways, after um, we go over that, we'll be going over how you would set up your React app, um, and I'll also be walking through that React app and showing you React syntax along the way. Um, and yes, the, the code is React Reacts only. So after that, we'll be creating, uh, our, our, we'll be working on our little own demo so we can get used to all the syntax and the different components of React. And then after, Jody will be taking on props and state, which are two really big concepts and really important concepts of React. So as a disclaimer, if you are confused at any point, please ask, ask us any questions. Uh, we've had this slide for all previous sessions as well, but I think we need it the most for this one. There's a lot of content to cover when it comes to React, so do not feel obligated to absorb 100% of what I'm saying today. These slides will always be available to you with those links, um, and also the README accompanies this really well to give you some more in-depth uh, knowledge about that. So do not feel obligated, just sit back, um, try and listen to whatever you can, and if you have any questions at any point, reach out in the chat for any of the mentors to answer. Cool, so let's get started on the background of React. So to highlight what React is used for, let's take a look at this Twitter profile of this random indie band that not a lot of people know about. This is their profile. So you have a couple of tweets as well as you know, some tabs on the side to interact with Twitter. And you know, from, from first looking at this, this looks pretty complex. Um, you might not know where exactly to start. Maybe you'll try and code the tweet first. So if you code the tweet, First, this might look, this might be what your HTML looks like. It looks pretty, pretty intense, but you know, nothing that 30 to an hour of development can't do. Um, but keep in mind that this is only one tweet. Twitter is made of a bunch of tweets. Uh, in this profile, there's 8,832 tweets. So how would you code that? Would you just copy paste this 8,000 times? I mean, just coding, uh, copy pasting it 12 times makes it look like this. Um, also keep in mind that these bottom divs, I haven't even expanded. So they all look like this. I just wanted to you know, prevent your eyes from exploding. So all of them have the same repeated structure. They're all gonna look the same like this. They all have the same styling. Um, so it seems kind of repetitive that we would have to copy paste all of this stuff over and over again. And when it comes to, to web development and programming in general, just copy pasting code that's really similar is a pretty big no-no. So what if we had this magical HTML element, we can just call it tweet, that represents this entire HTML structure. And you know, the HTML itself is all the same and we can just pass in different details about it, such as the name of the tweet, of, of the person who's tweeting, uh, the username, as well as the actual content of the tweet. And then this HTML element will magically produce all of this HTML for us over and over again for us to reuse. If only, right? Well, actually, this is exactly what React components do. And it goes exactly down to the syntax. This is exactly how you would use a React component that's called tweet. And using this syntax, you're able to just 
do this over and over again and slightly alter the details of each component so that each will look like a different tweet. So with this knowledge and sort of thinking about this web page in terms of components, we can actually break down this complex user interface into more simple bite-sized components. So let's take the tweet since we've already been looking at that. Each of these will be its own tweet component and you could just pass in different content. So this is the lyrics to their new song and this is the attachments for a couple of images. If we take this idea of components even further, we might even see that this entire web page can be constructed of different reusable components. So on the side, each of these buttons can be a tab component. So each of them has an icon representing what the tab is responsible for, as well as the name of the tab. So all of these can just be one component that you define one time and just slightly alter the content each time. Similarly, the top shows the header component, which has the username, uh, the number of tweets they have, and a follow button. Because you can imagine there's a bunch of different profiles on Twitter and it would be really difficult to do the code or the HTML for that over and over again. So components really come in handy for taking this complex UI and building it up using bite-sized building blocks, which are React components. So let's take a deeper look into the tweet component. If we think of this as, um, as even more components, we might actually notice that this could be broken down even more. So this tweet component can actually be constructed of even more components. So this profile picture is a profile pic component. The content of a tweet can be its content component. The icon bar is an icons component, the user component on the top, and finally the options component on the side for you to open more options for what you can do with this tweet. And every single tweet will have these components that it can reuse over and over again. So this introduces a really powerful idea in React that components can be used to create other components. So again, all these building blocks come together. You start with very small pieces that are easy to manage, and then you just build them together as if they were Legos almost until you create complex UIs that look intense, like, like really beautiful, like Twitter. It is pretty mind blowing. It is all components, always has been. So with that out of the way, we can get into a more formal definition of what React is specifically. React is a JavaScript tool used to build user interfaces or UI. Something cool about React is actually created and backed by and currently backed by Facebook. So it started out as this internal thing back in 2011 that the Facebook ads team used to create a more uh, streamlined system to manage their code because it was getting more difficult to do that. And the popularity of it sort of boomed and they decided to uh, to launch it to the public. So now all of us are able to use this tool that makes it a lot easier and more efficient to build web pages. And like I introduced before, the core idea of React is using reusable code via components. So each component, you only have to define one time, and then you can just use them over and over again and slightly alter the component, uh, so, so slightly alter the content every time. And this makes for really interactive and efficient UI. Something else that React does is that if it notices that some underlying data of one component changes a little bit, it will automatically update that component to uh, mirror that new content. So you don't have to manually refresh the page uh, like you would usually do in normal HTML. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about React from the people themselves, take a look at reactjs.org, which is where they have their um, official website. Ooh. That's not what I wanted. Okay, so let's take a look at where React is currently. There's currently over 1,300 developers using React and over 94,000 sites that use React. And there's a couple of big names up there. There's Netflix, there's Khan Academy, Reddit, Twitter, Uber Eats. This is basically just the survival kit for college students. So without React, you know, none of us would probably be here. Another thing, um, they recently did a survey of over 60,000 job offers on Indeed.com, which is just a website for job postings. And out of 60,000 job offers, 78.1% of recruiters were looking for React developers, as opposed to the 21% who were looking for Angular, which is another tool that does something similar to React, as well as only 0.8% for Vue.js, uh, which is, again, another tool. So the main takeaway of this slide is just that even though you might not be doing web development for the rest of your life, it is React is just something that is very uh, important to, to learn. There's a lot of different concepts that are important and will carry over. Okay, so with that, 
let's take a look at how you would create your very own React app. But before I do that, time out, I would want to introduce a concept that is pretty important in web development, but we haven't really covered in our core curriculum, and that is terminals. So terminals are uh, interfaces that let us accomplish tasks on the computer without using a graphical user interface uh, or a GUI. And what a graphical user interface is, is what you're used to from everyday usage of the computer. All these graphics on the screen that you can point and click uh, to accomplish certain tasks. So as opposed to that, terminals let us run what are called commands using the terminal. And specific commands will do different things to accomplish certain tasks. If you want to learn more about terminals, we have done a previous workshop in our tooling series back in spring quarter, uh, where there's an entire section dedicated to terminals. So feel free to go to this link if you want to learn more about that. So for Mac and Linux users, there's a program already available for you to use the terminal. Uh, it is a very aptly named terminal. And for Windows, you have PowerShell. Um, there are a couple other alternatives that I linked in the readme, uh, such as Ubuntu. Um, feel free to take a look at those if you're interested. Yeah, so the command we'll be using today um, for React is npx create React app. And then the name of the app uh, the name you want to give your React app. And what this does is it creates a starting code environment for you to build your React web page on top of. It downloads a, downloads a bunch of code that allows React to run, as well as things that React depends on. Um, and it also uh, prepares a couple of files and folders for us just to get started immediately on React. One note about this is you must have Node.js installed to be able to run this command. Here's the official link for that download. Uh, that's going to be all I'm going to be covering on Node.js. We're going to have an entire separate workshop dedicated to Node.js and Express uh, next week in another bonus session. Uh, if you want to know more about how to get this set up, we are available after this workshop if you want to get started on that. So a quick note about code along. Especially for this workshop, we strongly recommend that you do not code along for this workshop. There is a ton of content to cover. And if you are trying to debug any te technical difficulties, you might miss a really big chunk of information. The instructions to get prepared in the readme are, are all in the readme, so you won't be missing out much. Uh, so yeah, take a look at this guy. He's um, sitting back and relaxing. So that is also you. Cool. So with that, I am going to create a React app. So let me open up VS Code really quick on the side. Okay. Cool. So to start a React app, it's convenient to just open up a fresh window for VS Code. And then from this point on, you are going to, and what VS Code is, uh, provides you with is a terminal right in VS Code. So it's easy to look at both your code and the terminal. And the way you open that is by going to terminal and new terminal. Is the font size okay, by the way? Okay, good to, good to know. So at this point, what you would do to create your React app is do that command, npx create React app, and whatever you want to name the app. So I'll just say it's demo React app. And then at this point, what you would do is press Enter uh, I'm not going to do that because this download takes a lot of time. Uh, you're just going to see a bunch of progress bars and loading as React downloads all the code necessary to run React apps, as well as creating those uh, pre-provided folders. So imagine that I click this. Uh, assuming everything goes well, the screen that you should see is this one. And what it'll say, uh, I boxed the most important areas uh, of information. The first box says that it was a success, thankfully, and it created this app in this specific location. So this is the location you want to open uh, VS Code in to, to work on this, this stuff. And then the next one, uh, I've highlighted the most important command when it comes to working with React apps, which is npm start. And what this does is it starts the development server. So what a development server uh, really quickly is, is it just provides uh, an environment for you to really conveniently work with saving and updating the web pages. We're going to be taking a look at what exactly it is uh, in the demo. So uh, sit back and relax on that one. Okay. So 
before we get into React syntax, let me actually open demo React app that I've already created. Okay, so I haven't touched anything in this app. This is everything that that command create React app will provide for us. The most important ones are the public folder, which has the HTML file and a couple of other pictures. Um, yeah, they like tooting their own horn. So here's the React logo. Uh, and there's also the source folder, which has a bunch of JavaScript and CSS files. Uh, we're going to be starting our journey on app.js. OK. So the first thing you might notice in app.js is this function. It's a weird looking function, uh, not only because the name of the function is capitalized, but also because it looks like we're straight up just returning HTML, which I didn't know was, was allowed. Um, so what could explain this weird looking JavaScript? Well, let's get into React syntax. So what you're looking at first and foremost is a React component. So this is exactly what we've been describing in the beginning. This is actually what it looks like. Um, this is a functional component. Uh, the point of distinction is that there's also something that exists called class components. They both effectively do the same thing in React, but we're only going to be taking a look at the functional version. And at least for the functional version, that this is the syntax. Um, you have the component name, which is app in this case, and you also have a return statement. But let's address this return statement because I have, like, what exactly is this? Is it HTML? Um, maybe JavaScript on the side is making it a string. Um, but what it actually is, is something new uh, that we're working with in React called JSX. So what JSX does is it, it extends the syntax of JavaScript to allow for these elements that look like HTML, but actually aren't. What they actually are is that uh, is they describe what the user interface should look like to React. And then React will take care of making it, uh, running the JavaScript, running the DOM manipulations to actually make it look like what the HTML would be. A point of distinction is that JSX produces React elements, not HTML elements. Um, and that just means that you know, behind the scenes, it's actually doing JavaScript as opposed to HTML. So this is a completely valid JSX statement. This is the JSX, and JSX can be stored into variables just like any other variable, like a number or a string. Something else you can do in JSX is you can directly put JavaScript expressions into your JSX using curly brace notation. So let's take a look at that. Let's say we have a variable called name, and I just store my name into it. Then we have another variable which contains JSX. And this JSX has the curly brace notation right here. And you just inject name into that and put is great. And the result will be Eugene is great, which to me is a little bit more like it. OK. So I'm going to go ahead and start this React server so we can take a look at what exactly this looks like on the browser. So let me run npm start, which starts the development server. Let me also expand this. OK. So you didn't see, but running this starts, it opens the browser on the side for me. Let me put that in. So this is all being done automatically using npm start. I didn't have to open the file. It just opened this browser for me. And it already shows all this content. And this is all content that React has put uh, inside here. It's all, all this JSX right here. Um, and it's just like starter code, uh, just to let you see that it's all working. Something about development servers, which um, I'll highlight right now. If we just change the content slightly and we hit save, You'll see that the terminal is giving us this compiling message just after saving. And then it says it compiled successfully. Let me pull this up, actually. And then I didn't have to refresh this page. And it already shows this update right here. So that's something cool about um, development servers. You don't have to refresh the page every time, as you usually would. And if I wanted to stop this uh, development server at any point, I would use Control-C. And that's Control-C for both for both Mac and Windows. And at any point, if I wanted to start up the server again, I would just hit npm start. OK. So let's get rid of all this. 
actually. Yeah, let's get rid of all the stuff inside that React has already given us. And let's do our JSX example. So that would be const name equals Eugene and const element equals this h1 with name is great. OK, so once I hit save, assuming everything, oh, whoops, I didn't actually put the element. So yeah, let's actually put the element in here. And remember that, wait, does this work actually? Oh, sorry, we would have to use a curly brace syntax so that we're able to put this inside. Okay, great. Let me zoom in a couple clicks. Okay, so there's a question. Everything that needs to be rendered will be in the return statement for the app function. Yeah, exactly. So everything that's in the return statement um, is what the component will display. Okay, so remember that I said that you can insert any JavaScript expression in here uh, into the curly braces. So that means it's not just limited to strings. Instead of putting a string, I can put like some math, so two plus seven. And it would show seven is great. I can even take this one step further and just put a, a straight a straight up function in here. So let's declare an arrow function and let's just have it return my name again because I'm incredibly creative. And once we save, oh, I forgot to call the function. So once we do that, all right, everything looks great. Cool. So at this point, you might be wondering what are these lines above and below this component? This import line is doing something with these files. And then this export is doing something with app. So this actually introduces a new concept called importing and exporting. And what importing and exporting allows you to do is allows you to share functionality across multiple files. And what I mean by functionality is functions, classes, components, constants, basically anything you can store in a variable or return from a function. And using import export, any functionality that's exported in one file can be imported in another file. So this is just like a simplified version of what we've seen uh, with the app component. If we export the app using export default, we can import it from another file using this line, import app from slash uh, dot slash app. And this dot slash is a special notation just to indicate that the file or the folder that it's looking for, sorry, I was right the first time, the file it's looking for is in the same folder as the file that you're currently in or the, the, the file that you're importing from. Okay, so let's take a look at this in action. So in the top, it's importing two lines. One is logo from logo.svg, which, which is just a picture of their React logo. Uh, it was used in the app component previously, but since I deleted that, it's giving me this warning that's just saying that logo is never declared, but its value is never used. So I can go ahead and actually safely delete that line. The next line is import app.css, and this is just the CSS file that's associated with this JavaScript file. And it just applies a lot of rules that get displayed on this page, which is why this isn't the, the basic times new Roman font that you always see. You know what? I actually missed the, the times new Roman. So let's get rid of all the style. We're gonna be simplifying this later on. So, Oh, it's because it's in another CSS file as well. I'll be covering that later on. But all the, all the alignment is gone, so we can tell that something actually did happen, which is good. Okay. So this app component is getting exported, but it also has to be imported somehow because all this stuff is getting displayed, so it has to be doing some extra stuff. And the file that's actually importing it is this one, index.js. So index.js, as we should expect, imports app from uh, dot slash app, um, but it's also doing some other stuff. It's importing index.css, which is the 
the CSS file that, yeah, it should be giving it the pretty font right here. Um, just to make things a little more simpler uh, for the demo later on, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this CSS file to um, make sure that we're only working with one CSS file. So let's delete that line. Let's save. Okay. And let us, hmm. I'm wondering why the font's still there. Oh, okay. So since we're not using the CSS file anymore, we can go ahead and safely delete it. Okay, so let's save one more time. Okay, so there's a couple more things that's importing on the top. It's also importing React from React, which is just the location of all the React code that will help us actually work with React apps, as well as this thing called React DOM. Um, and what React DOM is used for is its render function is being called and it's passing in this app component um, that we've imported. And this is how you use components, by the way, we're using this HTML like syntax. And then the second parameter is looking for this HTML element called root. Uh, a couple things out of the way really quick. Uh, this component that's surrounding app is something available in React that just gives you more, uh, more conveniences. It tells you, uh, gives you some good helpful warnings uh, as well as tells you if your functions that you're using are outdated. But besides that, it doesn't do much, doesn't do anything to the styling. Uh, another thing to call is this report web vitals function that React has provided for us. Um, all it does, as it mentions in this, co this comment right here, is it measures performance in your app, but it is entirely optional. So just to make things a little simpler, I will delete that too. Okay. So yeah, let's, let's dive into this, re this render function a little bit. Keep sliding the wrong way. Okay, so rendering is this concept of how React updates the DOM using JavaScript DOM manipulations to match your React elements to what the JSX would look like. And the way it renders is through this function that you just saw, react.render. And the first parameter is the component you want React to render. Um, and the second parameter is the HTML element that you want to render on. So in this render function, it's using this JavaScript that you might recall from our session three workshop on the DOM. Uh, and it's looking for an element that has an ID of root. So in order for that to actually work, you would need an HTML element to have an ID of root. So that would look something like this, an empty div with an ID of root. This is what is known as the root DOM node in React. And it's just the starting point for rendering. So it'll take this HTML element and it'll start running DOM manipulations on top of this HTML element to make our React page look exactly as how our React components have specified. So let's try to find where this exists in our own file. So it's looking for this element called root. That's actually in this index.html file available in public. So if I scroll down, it is right here. So this is the element that React will start rendering on. Okay, I've talked for a long time. Are there any questions? I think it's mostly been covered by mentors. So cool. Yeah, I will keep I will keep checking on. Okay. So oh root. Yes. So in order for React to render your components, it has to be it runs JavaScript DOM manipulation. So it has to take an HTML element and manipulate it in some way. So in order for that concept to work, you need an HTML element to render on. And in our case, that's the, the root element. Um, so yeah, right here, idea of root. This idea could actually be anything you want as long as you are specifying that ID right here in your second parameter of render. So it knows where to be rendering on. Um, does that answer your question? Awesome, okay. All right, so now let's get into the demo. Now that we have everything set up for that, I'm gonna take a drink of water.
Okay. So in order to highlight um, the different areas of React, we're going to be making Instagram today. Um, we've started a startup. We're ready to make billions of dollars, uh, but we might run into copyright issues. So uh, let's call it InstaScam instead. And what we want InstaScam to do is have a feed. And with the feed, you want to show multiple posts posted by um, different people. So this is an example of the final result that we're going to make. It's pretty similar to Instagram, but not really because we're InstaScam. So it has a username at the top for who posted. Uh, and this is my real Instagram, by the way, so follow for follow. And then you'll also have the content of the InstaScam post, which in this case is an image of a member of BTS. I swear I listen to them only for their music. And then there's different ways you can interact with this post. So you can either like it, you can comment on it, you can share it. Uh, also, you can see how many likes people have liked it. This one has zero likes, so it's very similar to my actual Instagram. And then finally, you have the caption. So this is just a little uh, thing you can attach on the bottom. Okay, so let's get started working on that. Okay. So let me actually pull up the completed version on the side. Okay. So first things first, let's make it so that all the content displayed inside this app div is in the center. So that's our, our vertical scrolling feed. So let's get rid of this element I used. Um, okay. And let's update our app styling so that we have width of 100%. A display uh, flexbox. So let's enable flexbox. Let's have all the items inside this app container go column wise. And let's align the items vertically by the center. Okay. Let's delete this too, since we don't need that anymore. Oh, and one thing to call out is you might be wondering why this is class name instead of class. Um, this is because remember, this is actually JSX and not actual HTML. The class attribute is reserved to HTML. So it would not be a valid call for you to style using that. So this is how you would style with uh, React instead. Okay. So if we save, compile, okay. Yeah, so nothing, there's nothing yet. We've just said what our container will have, but there's not actually anything inside there yet. So let's make our post. So the first thing we should probably do is make a component for the post itself. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna make a separate components folder because we're cool programmers who organize our files. And inside this component, components folder, let's call our component instapost.js. And it is common convention to have your file name uh, be the same name as the component. And let's also make a CSS file in this for our instapost component. Okay. First thing we should get out of the way is importing this CSS file so that all the styles are applied. Let's do that. Import, since it's in, it's in the same folder, it'll be instapost.css. And to work with React, let's also import React. So import React from React. Okay. So with this, let us go ahead and start on our instapost component. Okay. So Using the functional syntax, we'll have a function of instapost. And we want it to return content. So let's have a div. And let's have this one be a class name of post. And then inside our post, let's have the top line. So that'll be um, the account line. So that'll be where my username is displayed. So that'll be div class name equals account line um, and inside that account line we'll emphasize my username we'll, we'll bold it up and 
let's just pass uh, a hard coded a hard coded uh, inner text. Okay, so let's go ahead and define these classes in our CSS file. Let's see, first up is post. So post, let's give it a non Times New Roman font. So we'll give it a font family of this. And it was recent, recently brought to my attention that this is pronounced Sigu and not Segway. Um, the next one we'll have is Sans Serif. So this is just a comma separated list. What this is doing is that this is the first font that we want it to display. If that's not available in the browser for any reason, it'll go to the next one. Okay, save that. Let's also add our account line. And let's just add a little bit of spacing inside of it to make it look a little prettier. So let's have it have a padding of eight pixels. Okay, so you may notice right here that it's telling us that InstaPost is declared but never used because that's actually, that's exactly what's happening. We, we declared this component, but we don't really do anything with it because React DOM is rendering the app component. But if the app component does not contain this component as well, it won't render this component as well. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's make this component accessible outside of this file using export default insta post. Okay, so once this is good, let's import it in our app.js file using import insta post from dot slash, this will be in the components folder and insta post. Okay. And with that, we can now use this component as if it was declared in this file by calling insta post. Okay. So if all goes well, and this says we compiled successfully, awesome. Yeah. So we get this uh, account line at the top. Okay. Oh, is it Sego? Shoot. Okay. I'll learn eventually. Okay, next up is the actual image. And yeah, let's go ahead and do the image and let's do the icons too. All right, so the image will look a little something like this. It'll have a, um, well, before we do that, we have to first get the image. So the image I'll be using is not available yet. It is available in the completed project. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up on the side and copy paste it over here. Do, do. Okay. Pause for suspense. Okay. So let's make our images folder here. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag and drop all the images that we'll need for this demo. Okay, so this is the first one. Very nice, okay. Let's use it, uh, let's import it over using the import line. Let's import his name from, this will be dot dot slash. And dot dot slash is a little bit different from dot slash. Dot dot slash is saying this um, this file will be in the folder outside of the current folder. So it'll go out of components and go into source, and then it'll look at images. So dot dot slash images slash jungkook.png. So once we have this JavaScript variable, we can now use it as any JavaScript variable. So let's have an image. Its source, or the image it actually is, will be curly braces, since this is JSX. It'll have, let's give it an alt tag of, hmm, John Group in a white hoodie. Okay. And let's see. Yeah, that should be it for now. Okay. So we save. It's a very big picture. Let's fix that. 
Um, all right, let's go into CSS file. Okay. So let's say we want all images inside of this post class to take on a width of 100. Okay, this looks better. Are there any questions so far? All right, we're good to go, I think. All right, let's, let's wrap this up, the final stretch. Let's add the icons, the like count, and the caption. OK. So let's make a container for our um, all of this stuff, actually. So just the info that the InstaScan post will have. So let's have a class of post info. And inside this container, we want to have another container for, your, for the icon bar. And let's actually get these icons. So these are the heart, comment, and share pictures. So let's import them the same way we imported our Jungkook. So let's import heart from dot dot slash images slash heart dot png. Let's import comment and share in the same way. Okay, so once we have access to those, we can go ahead and make our image tags. Mm, source equals heart for this one. Let's have the alt tag just be heart icon. And because I'm lazy, let's just copy paste this two more times. Okay, and now let's change the content. So this is the comment. This will be the comment icon. And then lastly, the share. Oh, whoops. And then this will be the share icon. Okay, so once we save, no styling has been added, by the way. Everything, everything is blown up. So let's add the styling. Okay, first up, let's have our icons have a display of inline block. And let's also add an attribute to our image, our icons. So this is class name. Class name equals icon. Let's do that for all three of them. Okay, so now we want all our HTML elements with class name of icon to be in line. Let's give them a fixed width so it's consistent among all three icons, so 30 pixels. And then lastly, let's give a padding of four pixels. So once we save that, and also save this, hopefully things start looking a little nicer. Yes, okay. All right, things are, things are coming together, this is nice. Okay, last up. We have the like count and the caption. So let's just do those really quick. Let's make another div for our likes. Let's say this got 100,000 likes. And then let's add the caption div. So first it's the username. And then something I would probably say. Okay, so once we save an update. Great, okay. Yes, this is all coming together now. Um, cool, yeah. So this is the part of the demo that we'll do before. Actually, before we I hand it off, let's take a look at how um, components can be reusable. So right now we only have one post that's being displayed. But if we go ahead and just copy and paste this component and call it 
multiple times, then let's say four times. This should start be looking like a nice little feed. Yeah, nice. Already better than Instagram. Okay, so yeah, with that, that will be the last thing I'll cover for this half of the workshop. It is currently 6.50. Ooh, okay, so then we come back at seven flat. Very nice, very aesthetic. Okay. Let me turn on the lo-fi again.
All right, it is seven o'clock, so let us get back um, to our workshop. Okay, so let me just pull up the code that we had before, um, and I will split screen this. Uh, also, can everyone see my screen all right? Yes, all right, perfect, thank you. All right, so let us get rolling. So uh, this is where we left off. Um, basically, we have, um, oh, I guess I should reintroduce myself. I'm Jody, by the way, if you forgot my quick introduction, um, I'll be taking on the second half of this. Um, so let us get started. So uh, basically, we had our, uh, our Instagram post right here. Let me fix the size of this real quick. Um, Oh, I am moving, I'm sharing the wrong window. Let me actually restart sharing uh, so that I can share the screen. I think I only got the window. Boop, 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 boop. New share, aha, uh -huh. there's a button. Okay, right, there we go. All right, now we have both of our screens here. All right, so we got our React uh, code um, and then we got our post right here. So before we begin, um, I'm just gonna touch up some of this code real quick to make it more of our Instagram post. So currently uh, we can see this like picture grows with our screen, it's pretty big. Um, so let's just make it a little smaller um, so we can see what this looks like. Uh, so I'm just gonna add a max width to our post. Um, oh, let me pull this up. So uh, our post div, so everything that holds the Instagram post is held uh, right here, a class A post. So let's just add a max width to this. And let's just make it 300 pixels. Um, all right, and we can see that. Um, and to add some clarity to our post, we're also just going to add a border of one pixel solid. Oh, just so we can see really clearly um, what our, uh, our Instagram posts are. Um, that should be reloading. Oh, wait. Oh, I wrote solid bold. My bad. I meant black. All right, so we got a nice border around our post now. It's looking more like Instagram. Um, so our Insta scam is good, uh, basically doing pretty good. Uh, but one thing right now that's lacking is that we can see that all of these photos are literally the same photo. And all of these captions are literally the same caption. Like it's all posted by Eugene. Like Eugene, we get you like Jungkook, but like you, get, you don't have to do it four times. All right, so what we wanna do is be able to sort of customize each of these Instagram post components, right? We got four of them um, in our app.js, which is being rendered, or I got, I got three of them right here. Uh, they're all the same. So how do we get different pictures in here? How do we get different captions in here? So uh, let us figure out how to answer uh, this very, very important question, which is how do we not hard code uh, component content? So like, why would you look at one picture of a Korean idol when you can look at more? All right, and to do this, we use something called, oh, too far, uh, or, okay, before, before I spoil what we have, let's, let's look at a simpler example. So let's say we have this really simple component called Singer. Um, all it does is return, say, stream BTS. Um, of course, in our app uh, component, we can put like Singer, 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 and then when it renders, you're just gonna get the same thing three times. Um, but I don't really want that. Like, I want to somehow change our function, our function component. Um, and I want to be able to do something some, like something like this, where I can specify like the specific artist I want. So you know, I'm I'm a pretty big IU fan. Um, I also listen to it twice. Like I I can't we can't just have Eugene show his love. I, I also have to do this too. So uh, I'd like to do something like this, where I can pass in you know BTS IU twice, and then the component will show my customized singers that I want. All right. So how do we do this? We use something called props. 
in uh, React. So what exactly are props? Let's take a look. So uh, in every React function, uh, there is a parameter called props, and that is this the little pink parameter here. Um, and this props current parameter is actually an object containing all of the data that we passed in. So in the previous example, I had the like, artist BTS IU twice. Um, this props component will contain all of that information. Um, so let's look at a, a more thorough example of this. So here's one more new component. It's still pretty simple. All it is is a div. Um, it says like it's, it's called idle. It's got the name of uh, this idle, in this case, IU. Um, and it's also got the age, uh, in this case, 27. Um, but I don't want to actually hard code this, right? I, I want to be able to change uh, sort of like what this is going to say if I want to pass in a new singer and their age. Um, so that's where we use props. So, um, uh, so to use something like IU uh, and age 27, um, I have to pass in this, this props parameter right here. So we'll, we'll, we'll say props. Um, and then we're going to access that information um, just like we well, just like we had access a JavaScript object. So recall that I said props is actually an object that contains this information. So if we actually broke down what props looks like, uh, let me turn on my pointer. I realized I didn't do that. All right. So when we look at what props looks like, we can see it's just an object and it contains this exact information. We've got name, which is the name of uh, this one prop that we passed in. And we also have age, uh, age here, and we can see the, the, the data matches, IU, IU, and then 27, 27. Um, so when we actually uh, render this in our browser, we'll see that it, uh, it actually replaces props.name with the name we passed in and props.age with the age we also passed in. So this is what is going to make uh, React really powerful. Um, of course, we can also uh, add in more singers with their ages here. and We can see it'll also update with their name. Um, and we no longer have to hard code those values. Now, if you're thinking in your head, hmm, this looks kind of familiar. Uh, I know in JavaScript, we have, you know, say we have a function, I pass in a parameter, um, and then I call that function, and then I, I say, oh, okay, instead of passing in like just a generic, like a, a hard coded name, I'll pass in as parameter. You say Eugene Jungkook in the console, it'll print out as Eugene and Jungkook. Uh, React components are very similar. So we have our function component right here, looks very, very similar to the regular JavaScript component, except it has JSX in it, as we could see by the P tags here. And we pass in props. Um, and this props is gonna have uh, a name property in it. So if we pass, if we said like, hello name, Eugene, hello name, Joan Cook, uh, React will actually render both of these. Um, so it's very similar to just regular JavaScript parameters, but in this case, we're using it for components instead. Um, and so this is super powerful. It's gonna allow us to actually customize our components. So let's actually go and do this for our Instagram post now. Um, and while I head over to that screen, feel free to drop any questions in the chat. Um, all right, let's head over to that. Split screen. Alrighty. So do 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 do. Okay. So what are some things in this Instagram post that we want to change? Um, and we can see here, I don't want to, let's, 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 let's look at this. I don't want to um, hard code this account name. You know, we can have many different accounts in our Instagram, um, especially when we're scrolling through a feed. We don't want to hard code this image anymore. Um, I'd like to also not be able to hard, or not need to hard code this caption. Um, every image is going to have its own caption as well. Um, so let's actually just uh, go here to app.js uh, first. Um, and let's figure out what we're going to do. So first, I'm going to import some new images. So if I go to my image folder, Eugene already kindly uh, imported some of the images I'll be using. So I'll just be using those. That is um, the, this photo, this photo, and uh, this photo. So this is IU, by the way. Um, her name was mentioned in the slides just a few moments ago. All right, so I'd want to be able to specify for my Instagram post a component, InstaPost, I want to specify like an account name. So uh, for my account, it would, it, it would be uh, my Instagram handles. I am Jody Butler. Um, and then I also want to pass in an image. So we could say image equals, uh, let's actually import a few, let's import uh, like three of these images. So um, let me, uh, okay, we'll say import. 
uh, let's call it IU with bun from uh, images. Uh, okay, images, IU bun. I hope that is the right, yeah, that is the right import. I will say image, IU with bun. Um, and then uh, we will also do, oh, did I miss a compile? Oh, it's just, I haven't finished typing it. Okay, um, and then we also have um, uh, that caption that we want to specify for each image. So I'm gonna pass these in for each of our components. The caption is equal to uh, steamed buns, woo. Okay, let's just do it for one component real quick so we can see what this looks like simply. All right, so this is the, the information I want um, in a specific Instagram post. Now let's actually, um, oh, did I do this wrong? Okay, let's look. Oh, I, but, 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 I, I messed up. So um, images is in the same folder as um, app.js. So we don't use dot dot, we just use dot. And if we refresh that, I still get an error. So obviously I did this wrong. Um, okay, let's look real quick. Images slash iubun.png. Huh, that looks right to me. Let me look real quick. Dot JPEG, is it really dot JPEG? Ah, there we go. Thank you. I can obviously um, tell the difference between PNG and uh, JPEG. I'm, I'm very literate. All right, so this still shows Jungkook because we haven't actually put our props component in our Insta post. Thank you, uh, by the way, for that. So let's go to our Insta post component. I will collapse this so it's a little easier to see. Um, so we have a few things hard coded here. Uh, one of them is you dot, uh, U glow, Eugene's uh, thing, but I want to put in mine. So I do props.account name. And if you're wondering why, why account name, it's because when I pass it in here, uh, the prop I specified was account name. So here as well, we say props on account name. Um, the other thing I want to take out is the image. Uh, we're going to pass in props.image I passed in. Image because image here, we pass it in. Um, and then the caption. So let's go to the caption here. Um, let's change the account name. So props.account name and then the caption. Say props dot caption. All right, and so when this renders, everything should look like this. Yeah, and we can see um, it now says I am Jody Butler. Um, it's got the image I wanted here, and yay, the caption steamed buns. Um, and I can do this for many components. I don't have to do it for just one. Obviously, that's what makes React powerful is that we can keep reusing components and putting in new data. Um, so let's put another one here. Uh, let's say like a Joe D. Lin. Um, let's put in a new image. I'm going to import both of these images. Um, we have import IU cute from images IU cute. Let me make sure not to mess up the dot PNG. That one is in fact a PNG. Then we have IU funny from images. Um, remove this images. Uh, IU funny that PNG. So I'm just importing some images right now. Oh, that, that's a JPEG. I did it again. All right. Uh, all right. So let's import those images and let's uh, put those in here. So we got a uh, IU cute. Um, the caption for this one should be um, Wow, she is perfect. All right, and then we can add our third image there. Are you funny? Do do do. Um, let's also change the account. It's because it's, it is definitely not me again posting these things. So like, yeah, it's definitely not me. Uh, Got to change the account name. New caption. Uh, put some hearts. All right. So um, as we can see, oh oh oh, that I don't know what happened. All right. So as we can see here, we have. Uh, three different InstaPost components, um, and I'm passing in uh, data through these props. And we can, as we, if we recall correctly, that's just going right through here, props. And I'm accessing each of these properties, like account name, image, caption, uh, just like I would with a JavaScript object, because props is indeed an object. So props and account name. In the source of the image right here, we got props image. Uh, and then the same with the caption and the account name. 
Um, and if I look in our browser, we can actually see that all of these have rendered. Um, so this is what makes React super, super powerful is we have not only just reused code, um, but uh, we have customized it as well. So let me look at the chat. Oh yes, it looks like, okay, do you have to import every image or is there a way to avoid that like passing the name or location of the image? Um, so there is a way to pass in the name. Uh, what I'll just give a, a quick summary. What you would do is you have to put in the public folder and access its path. Um, we're not gonna cover that today, but there is a way uh, to do it. Maybe one of the mentors can drop a brief explanation in the chat. Uh, but for now, if you have a few images, it's commonly good practice to just uh, import it straight like this. Um, but yes, if you have any other images, there are other ways to do it. Um, I'm just not going to cover that today. All right, so this is cool. Uh, we've got our component, but I'm all about simplifying code here. Um, uh, let's let's also look for more places to simplify code. So recall that earlier Eugene had mentioned um, in Twitter, components can be made of components. Uh, so if I look in our InstaPost component, we can see there's some code here that is in fact repeated. We've got this like these icons. Look, it's this whole line that's essentially the same. We've got, you know, this class name icon, class name icon, they're all images. The alt tag is mainly the same except for, you know, the the name of the alt, and then the source is different. These are very, very similar. It's basically like copy and pasted code. In fact, when I made this, I just did copy and paste it and I updated some of these. So rather than copy and pasting code, let's use React. Let's make a React component. So within the same file, um, I'm just going to make a component that's just for InstaPost to use. Um, earlier we made InstaPost in its own file, but because I don't expect anyone else to use this component, um, I can just hide it here. So let's make a, uh, a component called icon. Um, this will be uh, exactly the same as our icons right here. So I'm just gonna pull this up, copy and paste it. So return this. All right, um, obviously this is hard coded. We don't need to hard code some of these things. So uh, let us change this so, um, so I can do some cool string concatenation. Let's change this to say um, props dot, uh, we'll call it the, the type of icon plus icon. And then here we'll say uh, props dot image and this will be our image. All right, so these will be both passed through props. Um, so now let's go replace our um, images below. So now we got our function icon component. Let's go down here. Let's replace all of these lines with one of those. So let's first replace this top one. We'll say icon. Um, and then we recall that our, our props that we need are icon and image. So icon is gonna be the name of the icon. So I'll say icon is equal to heart um, and the image is equal to the heart image that we imported. All right. And then let's just get rid of this line. Uh, let's do the same thing for these other two. So I will just real quick copy and paste. Um, and let's change this one to comment. We'll use the comment image. And then we'll have the share icon and we'll also have the share image. Ooh. Share. Right. And then let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. All right, and when I refresh, we could see of all the, let me let it give it a second to reload so it doesn't have a thousand icons, there we go. So we have the heart, uh, which is here, the comment and the share. Um, and that was just a new component we made. Uh, we made a smaller one inside of this file. Um, InstaPost is using this icon component within itself. Uh, so yes, this is another important concept. Components can be used anywhere. Components use components within themselves. Anywhere that you have like really crazy repeated uh, code in HTML, it's really good to use a component. All right, one more thing to simplify our code even more. Um, so we can see here that like, uh, I actually, when I was typing this out, I had to copy and paste this a few times. Um, and then I just had to go back and change each of these. Um, I'm, I'm kind of lazy. I want to find a quicker way than rather just copying and pasting these, you know, maybe I'm gonna have like a thousand of these posts. I don't wanna have to copy and paste this a thousand times. So is there something that I can do to make this little copy and pasting even simpler? 
Um, yes, and there's something in JavaScript that we can use to make this better. And I say JavaScript, this is just part of JavaScript, not necessarily React. So we're going to use a magical function called array.map. All right, array.map. So what exactly is array.map? Um, array.map performs a function on every item of an array and returns a new array with the results of each of those function calls. And if you're like, what, Jody, you worded that really poorly. Um, I'm really sorry. Here's a diagram instead to explain it a little better. So say we have an input function and I'm gonna say, all right, we're gonna double each item and then we're gonna return an array um, of each item doubled. And that's what map is doing. So in this case, we'll take one, it maps to two hence the name of array.map. Two goes to four, three to six, four to eight. Um, we're multiplying everything by two. Um, another example, say we give it an array of, of strings and I can say, oh, I would like to append, uh, you know, whoa, this W-O to the end of every string. A map can do that. So it'll go through each of them and append whoa to each. And then it'll give us back, it'll return this new array. So we've got solo whoa, taco whoa, hello whoa. Okay, I'm sorry I said that. All right, so here's an example of what this would look like in code. Um, this is our first example numbers array. Um, let us call dot map on this numbers array. So we have numbers and we call dot map specifically on the array of our choice. Um, and then we pass in a function. So a dot map takes in a single function. Uh, you can remember this is just the arrow function. Um, this function is gonna be returned or performed on every single item. And within this function, we can see a parameter here. Uh, we can name it whatever we want. In this case, I just named it num. Um, but we, we must pass in this parameter because this parameter gives us access to that actual um, item that we're at. So whatever current item we're at during our iteration, it is going to be in this value of the first parameter. In this case, num. Um, so we can see here num times 2 is uh, uh, what will be returned. Um, so if we actually print out this function from dot map, uh, we'll get this output right here, which is 2468. Um, everything from here is doubled. All right, so that's dot map. Um, yeah, so this is just a cool JavaScript trick that you can use uh, to make your code simpler. So let's actually go back here and do that uh, for here as well. All right, so um, here we have like these repeated Insta posts. Let's actually turn this into a list and we can just render that list. Um, of Insta post. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out all of this, this data. Um, this is the only thing that's different for each of these components. I'm going to put it in an array. So let's make an array. I'm just going to call it like post info. Um, and we're going to set it to a bunch of JavaScript objects. And these are going to contain um, an account name. So the first one is I'm Jim Butler. Um, and then image would be uh, you with a bun. And then caption is CV buns. Um, and then I could do this uh, a few times to have uh, all of our information that we need for our posts. Uh, I believe, okay, so it was Joe Lynn. It was IU, what was it? Cute. Cute. Um, I think I said something like, wow, she's perfect. Um, and then last one, not, not me, obviously. I don't have fan accounts, like actually. Um, and then I you uh, funny. All right. And then the caption was uh, it's just hearts. All right. So let's basically take this array of um, of JavaScript objects that contain that information we want um, and map it into like uh, in, from a JavaScript object to an actual Instagram post. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some curly boys because we are uh, now using some uh, JS hex. Uh, and then I'm gonna say this array dot map. So uh, post info dot map. Um, let me pull up the reactive on the side, All right, dot map. Um, and recall, it's going to take in a function that takes in a single parameter, and that parameter will be the object we're iterating over. So um, we'll just call it uh, the post, so the specific post. Um, and then it's going to return um, a Insta post, Insta post, uh, this, that has an account name of. Um, Okay, so if post is our first object, then we access account name with post.account name. 
So account name equals post dot account name. Similarly, we do the same with the image. So image is equal to post post dot image. And then we also do the same with caption. Caption equals post dot caption. All right, all right, all right. Let's see if our code works or if I have an error. Um, it looks like it works. It looks exactly the same as before, um, but we've used a simpler uh, function to simplify our code. So as we can see here, just a quick run through, post info is an array. Um, and I'm going to use dot map to turn every one of these uh, objects and uh, give back a Instagram post instead. So post um, represents each of these objects, right? Um, at each iteration. And then at each iteration, I just want to access the specific property. So at each iteration, I get an object and I dot whatever I want, dot account name, dot image, dot caption. I pass it into our props. Um, and then we return this entire thing and put it um, in app.js and it renders. All right, so that is like part one of uh, what's really cool about React. And then we use a fun JavaScript um, thing to simplify it. All right, let us get to part two, um, which is state. So now we have do we're done with props. Uh, let's move to state. Um, okay, so what is state? State is gonna allow us to do even more cool things with React. All right, so what is state? State is data that is managed, like set and updated within a component. So like, what are some, ex uh, uh, what are some examples of when we do state? It'd be when we, you know, update a light count or, you know, adding captions, um, those involve data that is changing. If it's a light count, you're just updating a number. If it's captions, then um, it's going to be like the, the uh, like an array of captions that are being, or captions, comments, my bad, comments that are being added. All right, uh, so how would we use state? Um, I've been kind of using it high level. State is actually just an API that is provided by React. So what we're gonna add to the top of our file is this use state. If you're wondering what is this like funky, like curly boy syntax here, uh, what I'm doing is I'm just specifically extracting this one function from React. Um, so we're gonna be able to use it in use state. Um, so let's actually just dive right into what it would look like in our code. Um, I think that'll be the best way to introduce this. So uh, back to our code. All right, so let's go to our Instagram post. Um, actually, our Instagram post is kind of complicated. So I'm going to comment out some of this code um, and I'm gonna give a really simple basic example. Um, so let's just have an empty dot app post so you can get rid of this entire, um, uh, all of these posts and we can have a blank slate to work with, perfect. Um, remember to use this, I have to import uh, use state. So import use state from React. All right, so now I'm gonna have access to this use state function um, and I'm gonna use state like this. So uh, a few things about use state, because it is data relevant to a specific component, you must call it within the component. You can't call it outside of the component. Um, you can't put it inside like a loop or an if thing. It, it has to be right at the top level of the function it belongs to. Okay, so um, let us do something we can, or add stuff that we can use with state. So let's let's make two buttons. Um, we'll just have a, a plus button. Um, and we'll have a, um, what's that, like a, a P tag. We'll just put a number here for now. Um, and we'll say button is minus. All right, so if we look here um, in our React code, um, we can see a little plus and minus button pop up. All right, so this is a plus button, minus button. If we click it right now, nothing's gonna happen. What I want to do is I want to use this use state API so I can change this value here, all right? So what use state does is it actually is a function that returns an array, so let's just say it's like, uh, like state. Uh, it returns an array of things that we can use. Uh, it's going to specifically return a two item array. Uh, the first item will be some sort of variable that will contain um, a number we can increment or a, some piece of data. Uh, and then the second item in this array is going to be um, a function that we can actually use to set that first data value. Um, so although this right now stores a function light state returns, uh, 
has a two item array, you will never actually see this written like this. What you'll see is something called array destructuring. Um, let's do something called like count set like. Um, so if you're going, oh my God, but what is this? Uh, basically what I'm doing is um, because this is returning a two item array, I can write what looks like an array here and directly extract the first item in the array here and directly extract the second item in the array here. So these are variable names. We have a variable name called like count and one called set like count. Um, like I said, this one just has the first item returned by this. This one has the second. So if you're like, well, what is this magical syntax? It's just a very convenient way uh, to um, actually get these values out of your state. And this is what you'll see everywhere online as well. All right, so um, let us uh, continue. So we actually need to initialize this variable like count. So what we do is we pass in the initial value we want into use state, just like that. So um, just like that. Um, and I'm going to replace that hard-coded zero with like count. Um, and if we see here, it hasn't changed because it's zero. Like if I had done something like 100 um, and then we let our code uh, recompile, my, my laptop's a little slow, so I'm just gonna hard refresh it. Um, we could see it's 100. All right, so let's put it back to zero and let's figure out a way to increment this light count. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a function. And whenever one of these buttons is clicked, it's gonna call this function and increment this value. So let's make, make a function called like increment, like count, like count, um, like this. It's gonna take in no parameters. Um, and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna call set like count, all right? Set like count. Um, and then whatever we pass into set like count, just like you state, whatever we pass in here is what like count gets set into uh, or set to. Set like count will do the same. So let's just put in a hard coded value for nouns, um, like set like count like that. Um, so whenever we call this, set like count will be called and it'll set this to one. All right, so let's do that every time this button is clicked. So uh, if you recall back in oh, many workshops ago, we had our DOM API workshop. Uh, we would use something like um, uh, like set or like dot, what is it, like set on click listener or something? Or no, 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 no. Add event listener. Oh, like that. I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah, something like this, click, and then you would call like increment like count here. Um, but there is actually a better way to do this. So uh, in HTML, many uh, of our elements already contain this one really cool property called on click. And what it takes in is a single function to call every time this specific component is clicked. So like very, very convenient. Um, in our case, we can just click this button and we can call whatever function we want. In our case, we want to call increment like count. So increment like count. Um, and this should work now. So if I, if I have our React app going, um, if I click plus, it'll actually set this to one. Um, and because I hard coded it, it doesn't increment more. So let's actually change that um, to increment by one. So we'll just take the previous valid like count and add one to it. All right. So if I um, get this get this going, you can see that it just keeps incrementing every time I hit plus. So pretty cool. Uh, we can similarly add one to to the minus button. So if I just made a new function called like decrement like count, um, I could do instead of like count plus one, I do like count minus one. Um, and then we go to on click equals like decrement like count. Um, so this is pretty cool. Uh, uh, we can now increase and decrease this one value we have in the middle of our screen. Um, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, so let me just do a quick uh, summary of what's happening here. You're probably going like, this is kind of magic. Like what is going on here? We're just calling functions and setting values. Um, so let's do a quick rundown real quick. So when we get here, we say use state. We're going to initialize like count to zero, the value that we passed in here. Um, and then we're also gonna get a function that's gonna allow us to set like count. All right, and then now we go down to our actual function. We render like count um, in our p tag. 
Um, and then we have these on clicks that call one of these functions here. If we call increment light count, if we click this button, it calls increment light count, this button decrement light count. Um, and then when we call increment light count, we're going to call set light count, and that's going to increment the previous value by one. And what React is going to do is it's going to say, hey, I realize light count is changed. We just called set light count. There's a new value. Let's re-render. So what it does is it re-renders this entire component really fast. We can't really see it, but it re-renders it so that it displays the new value. And that's what's going on with this. Um, if there's any questions, just drop them in the chat. If I need to slow down, you can also let me know. Um, all right. So now that we have this in mind, um, I'm going to, let me just real quick, um, I'm gonna comment out these, or I guess I can leave these in. Um, I'm gonna uncomment out our posts um, and let's let's change the light count on our posts. So let's have our Instagram posts come back. Yeet, there we are. Um, let me zoom out. Oh, I just zoomed out my chat box. All right, so we have our Instagram post here again. Um, so let's let's do the same thing for our Instagram posts and let's change this light count. So where are we gonna use state? We're gonna use it inside our Instagram post component, this Insta post component. Um, that is because likes is specific to each post, right? So uh, like I said before, we need to import use state from React first step. All right, so I've added this line to the top. And then here, um, let's let's start a light count as well. So um, let's 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 make a variable called light count, and then set light count. Oh, that's that's set interval light count. And then uh, you state with the initial value we want. Now everyone's posts start at zero. If you're like Beam, all my posts also stay at zero because. I have no friends. I'm just kidding. All right. Um, so where do we have our hard-coded uh, likes right here? We have zero. So let's let's not hard code that. Okay. Um, and if if we refresh our page, we're going to see nothing has changed. Um, it's still zero likes. If we just want to be sure, like yes, this is in fact working, we can change this to like a thousand, um, and we'll see that. Uh, um, this will this will change to a thousand. There we go. All right. So now let's uh, let's rip off Instagram, right? Because we're Insta scam. So what does Instagram do to like like photos? You tap the image, right? Who actually hits the heart button? Because because I don't. Um, all right. So let's set a like a click function on this image. So we have our image here, which is responsible for. Uh, displaying this image, let's add an on click here, on click equals, um, and we'll, we'll call a function called increment like count like we did before, increment like count. Oh, oh, oh I typed, yeah, Ten, you didn't see that. Um, okay, and then let's make a function called increment like count, increment like count. Um, you can see the browser is mad because I didn't define it yet. So let's define it now. Um, so what do we do? We're going to call set light count to change that value of light count. And we're going to put the value that we want. And so it's going to be light count plus one. Uh, all right. And then if we, if we fix this, refresh. Do, 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 do. All right, so now the magic is if I click this image, we should see this light count increasing. So yeah, this is pretty cool. And we can see, I I'm not scamming you. I'm not bamboozling you. We can see it's actually unique to each post as well, right? Because um, uh, this the state is unique to a specific component. So uh, if I click plus for this um, or plus for this, it doesn't affect um, any of the ones around it. Um, it is very, this count is specific to the component itself. All right, so that's another really cool thing about React. Um, state allows you to change some data. Now, if you're like me and you're watching this and you're going, hold on, hold on, hold on, Jody, stop. Like, what, what is the difference between props and state? Like, aren't, aren't they the same thing? 
Um, like you just put, you pass in some data and then the, the component renders it like, what, what is the difference? Um, so there's actually a small difference, big difference actually. So uh, props is supposed to be used when data is passed from a parent component um, and this data is not meant to be changed. So if you go, if you recall back in our, um, in our, in our code here, this app component, which is uh, the parent component to Instapost, is passing in the data to Instapost. So it's a parent component passing in data to its child. Um, and this data is not meant to be changed. So everything we pass through props, we just display it. We don't actually manipulate it. We don't really do anything with it. We just, we just display it. State, on the other hand, is data within a component. So if you notice in our code before, I said use state goes within the function itself, not outside. Um, and this data is supposed to be changed. It's supposed to be updated. So um, if you use state, you're going to be changing it, um, and that change will just be rendered per component. So quick summary props is data from parents uh, that's not meant to be changed. State is data within a component itself, um, and that value the, that that value will be updated and changed within that component. All right. Um, I have not been seeing any questions in the chat. If you're if you have some questions, you can drop them. Um, if you're very confused and you're like, "What the heck just happened?" Um, you can also drop that as well. Uh, I guess we could start somewhere to figure out stuff. All right. Okay, but that is mainly it for our workshop today. Um, that is a very crash course intro on React. Um, so some challenges to do if later on, after you read through the readme and you're like, okay, maybe I'm starting to understand this or I just wanna, I'm, I'm a hands-on learner, let's get some practice. A few challenges, one you could do is add alt images to, or alt tags to images. Um, so if we actually go back to our code, you'll see that the alt image is hard coded and it says Jungkook in a white hoodie, which I, I would like to say that is not what our images are. These are not Jungkook in a white, Im or in a white hoodie. But this is hard coded. So uh, you can go back through this code and figure out where to add a prop um, to pass in that alt count or alt tag. Um, and then um, if you're starting to feel comfortable with props um, and use state, uh, we have another challenge, which is uh, to add a comment section. Um, in this comment section, it's kind of like this GIF displayed here. You can type in a comment and then the comment will be displayed. Um, yeah, and if you're like, oh, that, that sounds too hard. I have a full walkthrough of how to do this on the README. Um, the completed code is also posted on the README. So if you wanna try it on your own, but you don't actually know the answer and you kind of wanna see what the answer looks like, uh, you can go to the README. Um, and I can also just show that real quick right now, Hack School Fall, fall 20. Um, the completed code is in this folder here, Complete React App. Um, so if you get React set up, what all you have to do is do, like replace the public folder with this public folder. This has um, some, some, some files um, and replace the source folder with this source folder as well. Um, and we have, I, in here, I have already written out the full, the full code needed um, to get a comment section working. Um, and alt image tags, or yeah. Okay, so that is it for our workshop today. Um, thank you everyone for coming so much. Uh, I know it is like Thanksgiving break, you're probably ready to go and just relax, eat some good food. So thank you so much for coming out to our workshop. It really uh, made us really happy to see um, you guys here. Um, next week, we have another bonus section. So by popular demand, uh, people want to learn how to do some backend. So we're teaching intro to backend. That'll be taught by our lovely officer, Tim Gu. Um, and then I think Jamie might also be teaching a little bit. If not, it's just Tim Gu. And then also please fill out our feedback form. We genuinely, genuinely uh, appreciate the feedback. We do go through it. Uh, it doesn't just go nowhere. Um, and we, we read through it and try and prove with every workshop we have. But yeah, thank you guys for coming so much. <laughs>